What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video on F1 23. We are back for more breaking points to uncover more of the story. So, if you did not see the last video, go check that out. Um, it will be in a playlist below. Also, quick little thing, if you are enjoying the content, please subscribe for me. That would be greatly appreciated. If you don't want to subscribe, that's perfectly fine. But it would help me out just a little bit. And, yep, that's all I asked for. But if you don't want it, that's perfectly fine. But anyways, covering the p past two chapters, Aiden Jackson and Devin Butler made some contact in Canada. And obviously the race before, Aiden had an engine failure. But now we get to meet a p person we haven't met yet. Kind of a new character. And that's Devin Butler's dad. Let's go talk to him. Hey there, can you uh, raise that lamp about six inches, right? Excellent. A butler should always look sharp. <laughs> so. At what point in the 22 season was it clear to you that the team was struggling? Oh, well, right after the Hungarian GP. I may only be the money, but even to me it was obvious. The whole thing was a sham. Yet again, Connor Sports Jackson and Butler battling it out on track. It seems as Hang if on they... two seconds, Nat. Okay, Devon, Aiden's lapping faster than you. I need you to let him pass, please. Devon, do you copy? Listen to me, I need you to let Aiden pass now. Butler just completely blanking the order there. Seems like he can even acknowledge it. Too true, but as you can see, no way through for Jackson. No way at all. This Connor Sport rivalry is getting heated on the track here in Hungary. All right, Devin, that's it. You're getting punted off, mate. You're getting punted off. Oh, boy, this is not getting any better whatsoever. Anyways, we're going to send it on Devin here. Do we make it? <laughs> no, we don't. Oh, my God. Uh, I Honestly, as a man, I would be fuming if I was Aiden when this cocky little, little uh, munchkin, I don't even call him a munchkin, when... The villain, or the real asshole, Devin Butler, uh, is acting like this, especially at, obviously, Connor Sport. It's not a great look. But anyways, we're going to go down the inside on Devin Butler here as we do get that move done. But once again, it seems like Devin Butler's been really struggling with this car. I don't know what it is, but he just seems to be very inconsistent. Um, but hell, I don't know what's been going on in the past other races. I'm just assuming so, because every time we have something... We're always going to beat him. That's what I feel like. Happened in Miami. We were beating him. Uh, Canada was a bit kind of rough, though. I mean, because he did come out on fresh tires, I believe. And now here. I mean, clearly we were behind, but we were clearly faster. So I don't know if we came into the pits or not. I don't know. But anyways, look who it is up in front. Sebastian Vettel. God, do I miss him sometimes. Anyway, we have Alex Albon here. But actually, we're going to go down the inside of both of them as we do the old switcheroo offline. To get P13 in this race. And look who else is up ahead. Danny Rick. The Joker. Or Daniel Avocado. Is up there into P12. But Sebastian Vettel gets through P14. Man. I. Man. Why didn't they make. Oh. Okay. Alright. And there's a brief explanation. On the curbs. In F123. Uh, don't know how the ride height is. But anyways. We use a flashback. Yell me all you want. I don't care. We use a cheeky flashback. It's breaking points. Not like... Yeah. I mean, it would have made it even more difficult, to be honest with you. But we're up to P13, though. But... I may not... Uh, sorry, I read that wrong. Uh, <laughs> I went to talk about the objective. We'll go down on Danny Rick as we do get ahead of him. But the objective is to finish P10 in this race. And the bonus is to get top 8. And get fastest lap. Now fastest lap might be a bit difficult. Hungary isn't really my best track. And 
Well, I don't know if we're even going to be possible because we're fighting through the field and we really don't have enough. I feel like we don't have enough pace to really get around there. But once again, we're going to go around the outside of Fernando Alonso around this nice corner as we do get ahead of Alonso. is now chased for Esteban Ocon coming up into the chicane. But um, yeah, car was uh, car felt good. Uh, obviously, and now I'm kind of now I'm kind of getting used to the Connor Sport car. It took me about three races to get used to it, but getting very used to it uh brake bias and brake differentials are i mean i've been running usually 50 54 56 to 55 uh that's probably like the most reasonable brake bias that i've been running uh 50 50 is just not good anymore it's just, it's not been good but anyways we're gonna go down the inside on it uh i spent all kinds we do get that move ahead of ocon as we are now in p10 but now the chase once again a little bit of a snap there once again we go off track a little bit just i don't know it's just lost my sight or something like that. But anyways, now we have to chase after Lando Norris for P8. And also Kevin Magnuson who was up ahead in the hut. Sorry about that. Just uh, had a yawn there. <laughs> but anyways, um, up here as well, Valtteri Bottas up there in P7 too. So we could get best of the rest here today if we play the cards right. Anyways, we're going to go around the outside of Kevin Magnuson here with a nice move once again. A little bit wide, a little bit on that curb there once again. Uh, rode the curb a little bit. That is not what you want to do. And we're gonna get P9 in this race. Get on with it, Jackson. Get on with it, boy. As we now move up into P9 in this race. Now we chase after Lando Norris with just a three laps remaining. So I think it is possible we will get him and Bottas here as well. Um, again, the car isn't really. The car's pretty quick, but again, these cars up in front, they're very slow. I think it's just the AI. Uh, they're hard AI difficulty, I'm telling you. It's super easy, guys. If But. Hey, some people might find it hard. Honestly, there are some challenges, though, that when you play, I feel like that they might get a little bit harder, only just because of the objective. But anyways, we go down the inside on Lando Norris for P8 as we're now in the bonus territory. I don't know if we're going to get fastest lap, though. If we get around Bottas here pretty quickly, we might have a shot at it. But again, uh, we don't have much ERS to use. Well, I mean, we have a lot of ERS to use, but again, ERS, you dump so much of it. Um, I'm just trying to look at teammate status, but I guess clearly not. But we're going to go around the outside of Valtteri Bottas here. We get Bottas just enough space. We're going to go out a little bit wide, a little bit of understeer, offline a little bit, marbles all over the tires, and we're going to get that move done up into P7 in this race. As I think that's going to be it. I don't know if we're going to get Carlos Sainz. He's about five seconds ahead on those hard tires. We're going to keep on pushing. Um, don't know if fast slap is even going to happen. As it will not happen. First two sectors are both, uh, they're not not good. Technically yellow, but in this game they're red. So, uh, nope. It's going to be P7 though. Best of the rest. Get on with it, Aiden. That was a good race. We ride the curb again just for excellence. P7 for Jackson though. And that's the end of the race. We'll see you in part Fermi. out there deserves a mention today. Well, I feel like there are a couple, but let's start with Aiden Jackson. Couldn't agree more. Jackson had a brilliant race, didn't he? Yeah, we know Connor Sport has struggled all season. Jackson's done really well today, and that's in spite of the problems with his own teammate. Even before they became teammates, these two had their fair share of run-ins. It's a fascinating rivalry. You can't take your eyes off it for one moment. But nonetheless, some much-needed points today for Connor Sport. Here come today's winners. The team at Red Bull have done a phenomenal job recently and it's clear to see that they've put in the work and they should be so proud of the victory they've secured here. Well, finally get our first look at the press interviews with Natalie Pinkham. First question, will a good race out there, Aiden, today? Obviously, she's talking about it. So now we have to pick what we want to say. And uh, I think we're going to go a little bit harsh on Devin. Yeah, what do you expect? It's Devin. He was out of order out there. Uh, he really needs to rein it in. He's not the only one driving. I'm sure the 
team will have a lot to say about it. Well, he did certainly seem to All right. <laughs> Oh god. Now it's talking about Canada. Great. I don't know what I will say here. Do I want to be harsh or... Hmm. Oh, he'll, he'll never change. I don't think he'll ever change. Devin will be Devin. Hmm. It's a good race out there. Car form well. Um, so yeah. Uh, yeah, I think so. I did everything I could today, and you know the car performed really well. Uh, I think I found some good pace, and uh, yeah, forgetting any other hiccups, I think the team will be happy. So you mentioned the car there. In that regard, Connor huh. has not had the. Okay. Uh, this one. Um, reliability concerns. Reliability concerns. Well and truly behind you. Yeah, I hope so. Well, it's good to talk to the press a little bit there. You get our first little actions. You get actually a level up too. But anyways, wonder how the debrief is going to be at Connor Sport. Okay, I'll leave that in your capable hands. Devin, you had a problem with a team order today? Didn't happen. What? Look, I know everyone's saying I ignored it, but it didn't happen. I never got the order. Check the comms. Shoddy workman always blames his tools, eh? Check the comms. Okay, we check the communication pipeline. Fix it. This cannot happen again. Typical. Aiden, listen. What's the point? It's just Devon being Devon. And what? That makes it okay. He's an arrogant... No, you're right to call him out. But imagine if we didn't give him certain freedoms. He'd be even harder to manage. As his father, I know. Aiden, you're the best driver that we have. And it's right for you to put Devon in his place. He needs it. The team needs it. Thanks. Between you and me. I don't think this team is right for me. I think... Honestly, we don't deserve you. And I know that you're being discussed at other teams. So just keep doing what you're doing. Sure. I'm sorry if I've spoken out of turn. About Devon. <laughs> Not at all. You know the best way to keep Devon in his place? What's that? Beat him. It's like his own father hates him. <laughs> his own father just absolutely just ripped his own son apart. Um, yeah, actually, there's some key things, though. Uh, clearly, Devin's clearly saying that it was a comms issue. Highly doubt it. Um, once again, we'll probably look at emails and stuff. 100% he probably will say no comms issues. But again, uh, Aiden definitely is losing his cool here. As he's clearly not happy with the team, and obviously his dad, uh, not Aiden's dad, um, Devin's dad, clearly giving him a little bit of advice, but at the same time, you think he would favor his son, you know? You think that? But again, uh, we haven't been on the side of Devin yet, so we don't know what those phone calls could be. Probably in the, probably like in the future of the story, we'll continue, we'll probably switch sides with Devin, and see how his dad is, I don't know, but first off... Let's go talk to Davidoff. Davidoff. So, uh, I had a word with Aiden. And? Nothing to worry about. Don't think there'll be any more problems. What did you say? Doesn't matter. We level with each other. Just leave Aiden to me from now on. And, uh, what about Devon? What about Devon? We both know it wasn't the comms, right? Andrea, listen. Devon may push his luck from time to time, but I won't have his integrity questioned. If he says it was the comms, then you know what to do. Yes? Right. <clears throat> sure. I'll have them checked again. 
see that you do. Okay, so check comms. Clearly, I don't think it was a comms issue, but again, that's what Devin's saying. Uh, uh oh, sold out merchandise. That's not great. <laughs> we can't increase production because we're not level three yet. So uh, yeah, actually, I do like the Connor Sport merchandise, though. It looks really nice. Um, the T-shirts that they're doing really really good now this one's kind of key of developing the card we want to focus on 2022 23 or 20 or both for right now just for the sake of it for level three i'm just going to go with both we should focus more on 23 though but i just want to go with both why not so what about callie mayer was she on your radar at this point of course she was making big waves in f2 and ackerman would not shut up about her Well, we jump into Cali Maya. F2 sprint race. Around the Netherlands. Let's go see what's up. Here's our race leader, Cali Maya. She has been blisteringly fast around Zandvoort here today. And look at that! She's going into pit! Interesting strategy they've decided on there. She has been lapping at rapid pace, but is this the right call? Yeah, it's a bold move for sure. Looks crazy to me, but let's find out. Here she goes then on brand new tyres. The rest of the field still sticking with their original set. Where exactly does Cali Mayer come out? Let's see. Oh boy, here we go. <laughs> oh boy. Alright, so we're doing the Charles Leclerc 2017 Bahrain Challenge, I believe, where he pitted in the sprint race and he came back to get P1. That's what I'm going to assume it's going to be the objective. Yep, it's going to be to win the sprint race. Alright, well, first time jumping in the F2 car um, around Zanvall. And look at this. I mean, Zanvall has had an update. All the curbs are changed. Oh my god, it is actually comfortable to drive as we clearly just like to go on the grass there oh a little bit of a snap there once again these f2 cars are really really fun um they're a bit on edge though um i feel like you can make a little bit more i feel like you can I feel like you can make a lot of more mistakes in this f2 car but uh again we're gonna be racing as cali Maya here around zanvault as look at all these th now this is how zanvault is what we want to see we wanted to see it like this and when the first time we raced there back in 2021 I was like look at the curves are flat and now when they came in 2022 they weren't flat so I was like I would I was praying for an update but clearly they did get the update so I'm super happy about this okay, so um, Zanvolt will be much more fun to drive it feels like but again at the same time you just won't have these curbs I feel like the curbs will be a little bit difficult, mainly on those exit curbs, though. Um, not not the like the sausage ones. They kind of look like a little bit of, like a sausage curb, but mainly this exit curb right here. I feel like you can make a little bit more mistakes on those exits though if you just go across the line. But anyways, look at this. We're making a we're making a move on the go, Roy Nassani. That's my that's my favorite F2 driver right there. Nice. Totally. <laughs> but no, we're gonna get ahead of Roy Nassani now. We're moving up to P10 in this race, and um, yeah, it's uh, going pretty uh, pretty well. Uh, clearly, uh, the F2 car drives well. Callie's absolutely flying through the field. Uh, she's got she's got some rapid pace. Um, looks like the entire time. But again, going around the outside of Jihan Daruvula in for P10, and once again, we're gonna get ahead of Daruvula and now move up into now moving up, catching up to Fittipaldi once again. Purple third sector, purple middle sector, as could possibly get a purple in the last sector. Could probably set the fastest lap once again here. As we actually did set the fast lap, but we did set another fast lap. It's the 124.4. But once again, caught up to Fittipaldi here. Uh, he's he's not he's not rapid, but again, he's very slow on this straight right here. We're absolutely just we just absolutely just cooked this man right here. And another thing that I kind of want to discuss though is why are we in a trident? Like this is so unrealistic. Trident don't win titles. <laughs> trident don't win titles, but okay. It's like every story, it's like every, I feel like it's every game, it's always Trident that they always pick. That, or it's just, I don't know. Maybe they want to give Trident some love, probably that. But anyways, uh, going to go around down the inside on Theo Porcher on 
I probably said that completely wrong. I am so sorry. I can't speak French. But, um, whoop into P8 now. Now, around Iwasa, I believe. I don't know. Again, I don't watch much Formula 2. I try to get into it. And, I mean, I can watch it, but it's just, again, I just, I don't know. I haven't been keeping up with it too much this year. Um, I was I was good with it for about the first three races, and after that, I kind of just stopped watching. I don't know if it was just me or not. Maybe I should catch up on it. But once again, look who it is. The the American boy, the Florida boy, Logan Sargent. We're going to go down the inside on Sargent here. We're going to move into P5 in this race. And Dennis Hauger is up there in P4. Now, that is my favorite F2 driver, if y'all didn't know. Dennis Hauger is my favorite. Um, I don't know. I just I love his hair. <laughs> That's the only reason why I like him. I just like his hair. And, uh, well, that too, and he, again, um, I probably said this before, but I'm a, Re I'm, I've been a Red Bull guy since I've started watching it, and with Daniel Ricciardo, Max Verstappen, Sebastian Vettel, I mean, I just support Red Bull all the time, and, I mean, supporting Hauger in F2 still, I'm still gonna support him, him and Ollie Berriman are absolutely my two favorite drivers, Berriman's probably second, um, and then, obviously, F1, you got Max Verstappen, Logan Sargent, and I mean, once again, I could probably do a whole video about basically about everything like that, but we're not focused on that. We're focused on the F2 race, which is getting down on Dennis Hauger here. We're going to get past Hauger as we now, Kelly May moves up into P4 in this race. And once again, we're in a little bit wide there. Hauger's going to have the inside line. He's going to get us a little bit on the sexy. He's got a much better exit, but once again, he just slows down a lot. I don't know if that's just like the AI like are supposed to do that or it's just the AI being slow one of the two. But once again, <laughs> uh, lines aren't very good. First time driving the F2 car is a bit tricky to drive. I'm not going to lie. I'm um, trying to get used to it. And I don't know how many times we're going to drive the F2 car. But since we're already halfway through this season in F2, clearly. As, oh, Marcus Armstrong's out. Oh, boy. Um, that's not great. As once again, what is Novolak doing up here in P2? He don't win F2 races. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god what is going F2 that breaking point 2 is so much fun anyways we're going to go around Novolak here for P2 in this race as now Liam Lawson who is actually our teammate in F1 22 my team um, F1 23 why did I say 20 I'm sorry F1 23 my team for 142S racing look at him he's up here in P1 but once again, I think Calimaya is gonna absolutely going to break his heart and have him winning a sprint race because we're going to go around the inside. No, we don't. We back out of it. Uh, probably the right thing to do. I did not want to go off and make some contact with Lawson. Again, we want to have a nice relationship with Liam. But we can... Oh, 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 oh. Just keep that car on control, baby. Holy... Oh, that that could be a brown spot right there. That, that could be a brown spot right in the pants. That, that was, uh, that was, that was a bit, uh... Uh, that, was a, that was a bit of a hit or miss there. Uh, we kind of got away with it, but at the same time, I feel like, again, it was just a little bit of luck there trying to get around Lawson, though. We're going to get the DRS, though, but once again, I think we're going to have a good shot down this main straight. We should get P1 here very easily. Once again, if we don't, we're gonna absolutely just going to send one down the inside. And again, I'm just not comfortable with this car at all. It's just, I don't know, I just couldn't run the line, and I was braking too late. I forgot, because it, it's weird driving an F1 car and then jumping into an F2 car straight after. It's just like, I haven't I haven't drove much of the F2. I haven't drove an F2 car yet in a hot minute. This is the first time back in the F2 cars. But they're fun to drive. They're very fun to drive. It's just, again, I just haven't drove them much. But anyways, we're going to go around Liam Lawson here. Lawson's going to fight back possibly on the inside. But once again, that is it. We've absolutely done it. We have pulled, I believe, the Charlotte Claire from 2017. And we have won. We're going to have a shot to win the sprint race unless we spin out in the last corner. But once again, we'll probably use a cheeky flashback. <laughs> to get away, but we're going to get fast as lap. Cali absolute storms the midfield of F2 drivers. We're going to come home. We're going to take P1 in the sprint race. Cali Mea is absolutely flying in F2. Take a bow, what a masterclass to finish first here in the Netherlands. It was such a lucky strategy from Mayer, but she and the team have made a success of it. What a race, what a performance, what a genuine joy to watch. 
drivers are making their way out for the podium celebrations and it's going to be Trident picking up the winner's trophy. Congratulations to the entire team for coming out on top in that amazing race. Well, there you go. Honestly, she is, uh, she is, I believe, Devin's sister? I could be wrong. I believe she is Devin's sister. So, uh, Devin Butler might be under pressure here from if, uh, if she keeps on doing well. She might be under pressure. You don't know. But anyways, post-race, Chapter 4, uh, basically go through an interview process. Kelly, what do you put your success down to this season? Oh, I'd say probably my speed. In what way? I find lapping faster than everyone else really, really helps. Casper, <laughs> Casper. No, no, no. Seriously, though, I have a great team around me, and this guy, more than anyone else, has been pretty useful to have around. Casper, <laughs> what are you shy? Come up here. Yes, okay, okay, <laughs> okay. And Callie says you've been a factor this season, Casper. I'm not the one driving. Didn't agree with my tyre strategy, though. <laughs> this one has no respect for elders. <laughs> but can you give us more detail as to the exact role that you're playing, Casper? None whatsoever. It's all about her. He's probably right, to be fair. So, were you already in touch with Casper Ackerman at that point? <laughs> Ackerman and I go way back. Okay. Looks like uh, Ackerman and... Uh, hmm. Looks like they know each other very well. But... Casper Ackerman's back. Finally got a first look at it. But once again, we get a phone call from Mum. You saw the race. Could it be prouder and everyone in the office wouldn't stop screaming? <laughs> well, that saved me a few minutes. Guess I'll speak to you later then. <laughs> How are you, Mum? Oh, I couldn't be prouder, Cal. That was one hell of a race. Everyone in the office wouldn't stop screaming. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Honestly, the way you're driving, I think we're going to have to change your name. What's here this time? Callie Winner. You've got this in the bag, Cal. Oh, okay. That, that is the kind of award-winning journalism that we really do need right now, but one race at a time, okay? <laughs> that sounds like Casper talking. Is he looking after you? Yeah, yeah, always. Uh, actually, I've got a meeting with him that I'm running a bit late for, so I've got a dash, I'm sorry. Oh, okay, sweetheart. Call me tonight and well done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, well. There you go. Once again, don't have much time left, but once again, that is it for Chapters 3 and Chapter 4. Have a good rest of your day, and I'll see y'all in the next one.